Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the breath of his mouth, all their host. For he spoke, and it was made. He commanded, and it stood forth. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. 
eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the traditions around an ordination is that everyone who gets up to speak begins with a list of acknowledgments and thank yous, uh, and I am no exception. I would like to uh, first begin with a word of congratulations and thanks to Father Bear's family, especially you, Dave and Suzanne, as well as Natalie and John, Lauren and Matt, Michael, and your entire family. It is always such a wonderful gift, not only to bear witness to the ordination of a new priest, but also to see the joy of the families from whom they come. A priestly vocation is nourished first in the home, far before the seminary or the archdiocese has a chance to intervene directly. If you know the Bears, you know they're very adventurous people. You saw it on the video last night if you were at the reception. All these videos of us skiing. I remember distinctly um, wondering if I would survive uh, going down the back bowl of Arapaho Basin in whiteout conditions. Even the, uh, I don't know if we told you this, Suzanne. Did we? Oh, well, of course there's the video. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> There's a video in case you're doubting that they were truly whiteout conditions. And even as, as we're uh, going down, the ski patrol's like, are you guys going down? I'm like, yeah. They're like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but if you know them uh, to be adventurous, then certainly before that, you know them to be loving. Not a few times have I been moved even to a tear observing that love. I also uh, congratulate and thank uh, Monsignor Callahan and the many brother priests and seminarians who are with us today. As we all know so well, my brother's priestly vocations are fostered in the context of our fraternity. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. Thank you for your priestly witness and care which have also nourished Father Bear along the way. And as a broad stroke, I congratulate and thank all who are present here. What a blessing to see the children of God gathered to celebrate this momentous occasion and to savor the fruit that the Lord brings about in the church every time a new priest is ordained. And finally, I congratulate and thank you, Father Bear, for answering the Lord's call and allowing him to do this great work in you. It is humbling to have this opportunity to preach at your first Mass. It's a wonderful opportunity, as always, for all of us to reflect on the beauty of the gift of the priesthood and to bear witness to what God is doing in his church by calling you forth, Father Bear, as a worker in his vineyard. I remember some years ago when I was ordained, I received, was humbled to receive many notes and gifts on the day of my ordination. And I remember one in particular among many others that went something like this. What a joy, what a blessing. This brother of mine has become a father.
This is your new salutation, Father Bear. Catholic and non-Catholic alike, people will begin to call you Father. And also we celebrate today the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, and we are reminded that our Lord Jesus has come to reveal to us his Father. And so I thought it fitting on the first full day of your priesthood that we might reflect a bit on what it means for a priest to be a father. This is a point of confusion for some who have limited notions of fatherhood, who have limited their definition to those who bear children biologically. But we know. We know. By way of faith and personal experience that the priest is indeed a father. And this is not just a sentimental aphorism, a nice phrase that we uh, use to console and sedate grumpy celibate men. <laughs> we call them father because it's true. Today and each day, henceforth, Father Bear, you are a father. For the sake of brevity, because this is a very big topic, and I think the chief virtue of good preaching is brevity, uh, I chose just three virtues of a good father. And I did this not to limit the definition of a good father to three things. It's far larger than that. But I did it because I think these three things are what our world, what our church is longing for. And in many ways, this is a, sum a summary of many of the conversations I've been privileged to have with you over the years, Father Bear. A good father is loving, is courageous, and is humble. And note well, none of this is to say that women and mothers are incapable of these things. These virtues are just as necessary for a spiritual mother, but are often engendered and displayed in markedly different ways. First and foremost, a good father is loving. It sounds scandalously simple, but it is so necessary to say a good father loves his children. In your role as a priest, Father Bear, you will be called to administer the sacraments, primarily to offer Mass, to hear confessions, to bring the mercy of God to the sick and the dying, and to witness couples enter into their sacrament of marriage. But additionally, you will also be called to preach, to direct, to give advice, to give counsel, and to give a daily witness to your faith. And for the mercenary, for the father who does not care for his children, all these tasks are tedious and arduous. But for the good father who delights in his children, these tasks are similarly delightful. When your heart is filled with love for your children, you will be quick to provide for them. And what is more, as you reflected on so beautifully in your words last evening, it is God who first loved us. Inasmuch as you are daily conscious that your life, your calling as a priest, is a testament to the love of Jesus, your heart will be moved for love of his people. Pray, Father Bear, and pray for Father Bear, for the loving heart of a good father. A good father is also courageous. If you ask St. Thomas, he would tell you that courage is made up of two primary things, endurance and daring. A good father is long-suffering. He is patient. He endures. 
The highest expression of his life as a father is the sacrifice he makes for his family to lay down his life. Often we all look for a singular moment in which to do this. Alas, the martyrdom of our age is often rather lengthy and sometimes scandalously ordinary. The patient father is the one who bears with his children. I think we call this accompaniment now. To walk with. To endure. A good father never gives up on his children. He faithfully holds out hope for them never abandons them even if they give him trouble. If you ask a great many converts or reverts to the faith, perhaps some of you are among us, if you ask them how the faith took such deep root in their hearts, many of them will tell you that they were experiencing a tragedy in their family and father so-and-so was there. They will tell you that they struggled over and over again with the same sin, but Father so-and-so, he never gave up on me. It takes courage to have a love that never lets up. But it is a love that never lets up that engenders the deepest conversions. A good father never gives up on his children. He endures. Still, the courageous father is not only patient, he is also daring. A good father not only relieves the suffering of the repentant heart, but he is also sometimes called with great prudence to trouble the complacent heart. A good father not only accepts, but he also challenges. The world is not only crying out for relief from suffering, but also longs to hear the sometimes challenging, but altogether necessary message of truth to which you, the priest, must often bear witness here at the Ambo and in daily life. What is more, a good father is not weak. He's strong. Perhaps we might even say he is dangerous. And while his children are quite safe in his arms, the demons that ride their backs are not. You, Father Bear, must pose a threat to all that stands between God and his children. This is part and parcel of the masculine heart of true fatherhood. That gentleness is not a lack of strength. The gentle father is strong. He simply reserves the exercise of his strength for those who would be so foolish as to threaten his children. Work to assure your children, Father Bear that in your presence they are quite safe. That they can bring you anything on their hearts and that you will endure it with a smile and an embrace as you gently challenge them to growth and holiness. Pray for the grace to be a courageous father, to endure, to dare. In case you're wondering, I'm at my last point. <laughs> All of this talk about providing, teaching, and challenging highlights the absolute necessity of this third thing. Humility. A good father is humble. After all, you will hardly know how to provide for another unless you are humble enough to allow others to provide for you. You cannot teach 
without first being a student. You cannot wash another's feet until the Lord has washed yours. In a word, a father cannot know how to be a father until he knows how to be a son. Thus, your fatherhood and sonship are intimately tied together. Humility, as distinct from shallow notions of modesty, is about remembering who we are in the sight of God. If you are a man who knows that he is a sinner, then sinners will come to you. If you know that you are often in need of counsel and help, then others will more readily trust the counsel and help that you offer to them. No one, no one wants to learn how to pray from the man who never prays. No one wants to be challenged by the petty man who flies off the handle so soon as he himself is challenged. No one wants to learn who Jesus is from the man who knows not Jesus. If you are humble, your priesthood will come to life. Because if you are a man who knows that without God you can do nothing, then with him you will be able to do all things. God does great things in and through the humble priest. Pray to God for the grace to be a humble father. And so these have just been three Dimensions of true fatherhood. Love, courage, and humility. I pray, Father Bear, that you are blessed with many years of ministry by which to grow in your fatherly identity and your priestly heart. You have already exemplified so many of these virtues for me, and I pray you will continue to inspire God's people as you have inspired me. One of the greatest joys of the priesthood bears witness to its fatherly character. That as you watch your children glow, grow closer to Jesus, your heart will be moved to joy and gratitude. And you yourself will fall deeper in love with Jesus too. This, I know, is at the center of your life. The love of Jesus. My God, what a life it is. And it is yours, my friend, my brother, my father. Father Bear, today I give you, I give thanks to God for the gift of your priesthood, and I ask the Lord to bless your priesthood with a loving, courageous, and humble fatherly heart. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten and unmade, consubstantial with the Father, who remain all things in the name. Christ's name for our salvation, he came out of 
Dear brothers and sisters, let us turn our hearts toward God, our Almighty Father, and present to him our petitions. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Rosansky, and all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, may they remain faithful to the promises of ordination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all civil leaders of our nation, may they govern, legislate, and judge according to the divine and natural law. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those enduring any spiritual, emotional, or physical suffering, may they experience consolation through closeness to the sacred heart of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the young people in our parish, may they be filled with confidence and humility as they discern the will of God in their life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all married couples, May their love for one another be strengthened through dialogue and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the repose of the souls of Catherine Rose Bonnert, Maximilian Gerard Bergida, and all of Father Bear's nephews and nieces who we entrust into God's merciful hands, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, look with kindness upon these prayers and answer them by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, while they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being, and, pray, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, <clears throat> your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, and Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian. 
and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. We proclaim your temple, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, may receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. 
Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For the distribution of Holy Communion, we will have four stations. And so after the priests come up, and after the communicating come back down, then the seminarians and the other people here can come up again to the wall there up to the American flag. This section, line leader, 
you'll be coming up here and going over here, all right? This section will be alternating pews back and forth. The two of us will be there. The section over by the choir, if you'll come up by the brick wall, you receive communion, and then you'll go back to your pews down this side out. So we're having two people, two sections come down this side and that side. So play nicely.
us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. <laughs> On the way over, I heard very encouraging words. Keep it short. And that wasn't from the new priest either. <laughs> We gather here on this joyful celebration. 19, yeah, you're telling me. 1967 was the last time we had a spiritual son ordained from this parish. And so we're happy that someone who was baptized here August 6, 1995, and now the first Mass here today. We know the importance of that, as Father Sullivan said, about family and faith in this wonderful parish family, not only this wonderful family too, and also your parish family is a wonderful place. And as we pray for vocations each and every day, we know the importance of that, of recognizing the calling from God. And so you are a spiritual son who has made us proud and who has heard, not only heard the call from God, but answered it. So that's a beautiful thing and we're very grateful that you said yes to God and in this beautiful calling of service. When I was ordained 8,000 years ago, <laughs> uh, Lacadere was a priest too, in the 1800s. And so he gave me this note on my first <laughs> mass. Thou art a priest forever, to live in the midst of the world without wishing its pleasures, to be a member of each family yet belonging to none, to share all sufferings, to penetrate all secrets, to heal all wounds, to go from men to God and offer him their prayers, to return from God to men, to bring pardon and hope, to have a heart of fire for charity and a heart of bronze for chastity, to teach and to pardon, console and bless always. What a glorious life and it is yours, O priest of Jesus Christ. Certainly that is our prayer for you, the humble servant that you are, and the good guy that you are too, and that makes the difference. You will be a good father, and that's what's important, because that's what we need in this time. In our world, each and every day, we need those fathers who care for us, who help us, who encourage us, who love us, who support us, and to help us to know when we are doing wrong and to keep us on the right path. We know you'll do a great job, but our prayers and our support are with you, and we're so proud of you, and we love you. Congratulations. But more importantly, I'm here to give you directions how to get to the hamburgers and hot dogs. <laughs> oh, and the first blessings. So as you leave, uh, we're going to go left, because I do not know north, south, east, or west. So we're going out of here, we're going left, and then we're going to go up into, in between the rectory and the school, and go up those steps of the really goofy driveway there, and we're going to go to the top level and hopefully you can get your um, chairs and your coolers there on the parking lot or on the field. And then Father Bear will be giving first blessings, uh, and there's signs all over there. You'll pick up your food by the concession stand, and you'll go over to the entrance of the school, those glass doors. And there's a beautiful setup to receive Father's blessing. So we hope that you can all do that. 
And again, we just will go out the door. Which way? Very good. And then up the steps. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Monsignor, for your words. <laughs> um, <laughs> and keeping it short. I'm going to try and keep it short, but I don't know. We'll see. I've got a lot of people to thank. But I wanted to share, I was downstairs uh, vesting in the youth room before Mass, and Father Sullivan, which, fantastic homily, by the way, that was amazing. Um, he's, he said, I, Mitch, or he said, Father, I was just up in the church, and they were practicing the offertory hymn. And I was like frantically running around trying to get ready and my mind thinking a million things. And after like literally 20 seconds after he said it, I stopped and I thought, there aren't any priests in this room. And I thought, oh, you're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm father, okay. <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit to sink in. So how do I express the gratitude that fills my heart right now? As my time in seminary came to a close a couple weeks ago, I was reflecting on the many, many people who have modeled for me a life of faith and love for Jesus. And there are, I realized, no words or actions I can do to repay what has been given to me in following Jesus Christ and living for him and him alone. But with that said, I would like to hold up some very special people and many people who have made this weekend and, and who have formed me into the man I am today. And so first, I want to say thank you publicly to Archbishop Rosansky for ordaining me a priest and for giving me the gift of the priesthood. I ask you to pray for him as he lost his father back in the, earlier in the year and he lost his mother just last week. So please spare a prayer for him. Thank you to this faith family, to St. Paul's Parish. Gosh, I didn't think I was to be this early. <laughs> what a special parish we have. I, I was going to bring up the fact that I think this is, I'm the, the first priest since 1967 from St. Paul's Parish, and I don't think that's a coincidence, because I think I was raised at a very special time in St. Paul's history. Sister John Paul, thank you for being here today for doing the readings. Um, JD, thank you for being here and serving. Um, there's an incredible spirit in our faith family. And for myself, and I know many of the young people in our parish, we owe that to Vince and Sandy Reynolds. Vince and Sandy, thank you for giving so much of your heart for this place, this true spiritual home. I'm praying for you as you transition to this new role in your life. If you'll all indulge me in thanking Sandy and Vince for being our youth ministers for 15 years here, she's moving on to a new role. I kind of just needed that so I can compose myself. <laughs> Thank you. Monsignor Callahan and Father Scheider, thank you so much for being true spiritual fathers to this place. It's such a consolation knowing being ordained that I have two priests who work hard and serve uh, and are present and, and live for Jesus. So thank you so much. To my former brother seminarians, I'm so grateful for your friendship all these years. And I just want to say to you, follow Jesus wherever he calls you, and that will satisfy. And to my now brother priests, thank you for being here to welcome me into the priesthood with such joy. I've received so much from all of your fatherhood. In a special way, Father Kramer, thank you for vesting me yesterday. Father Kramer was my spiritual director for four years, four very important years in seminary. Father Sullivan, Father Vortreid, Father Staley, thank you, my friends, for being here to make this liturgy so special and for, most of all, being faithful to me and um, 
Without your support in some dark times, I don't know that I would be here right now. Thanks to everyone who helped to pitch in to make this Mass happen and this celebration, especially the Vocations Committee at St. Paul's, the Knights of Columbus, the servers, the priests, the seminarians, er, and the priests who sang so beautifully. It was really, really incredible and special. I also want to give a shout out to my extended family, especially the California Bears who arrived this afternoon and are here. My cousin Alexandria graduated from high school uh, just on yesterday morning, and she's here Friday night, I think, sorry. So now this last part. Um, I've been sort of agonizing over the right words to say, and <laughs> they will radically fall short of what exists in my heart. Matt, Lauren, John, and Natalie, Claire, and Ben, and Gus, and Monica, I love you all so much. Thank you for letting me share so closely in the lives of your families and for modeling me, Matt and John, fatherhood. Thank you for the gift of your motherhood, Lauren and Natalie. Michael, you're my brother and my best friend. Thank you for living a life of sacrifice and conformity to Jesus. There's a... Mom, I love you so very deeply. You've played such a special role in my life in fostering a life of faith and forcing me to listen to Bible studies when I was... <laughs> in blaring the Divine Mercy Chaplet through our house. <laughs> There's a tradition um, that uh, the mother of the man being ordained receives a, sp a special item from the priest at his first mass. It's called the manaturgium. Uh, it's this cloth that I used yesterday after the archbishop anointed my palms with the sacred chrism oil. Um, and, uh, and it carries that sacred oil, that priestly oil on it. And the, by tradition, this goes to the mother of the priest, and on the day when she's called home to her eternal rest, she'll be buried with it as a sign of how faithfully she lived her motherhood. She'll enter into heaven with it. I love you, Mom. There's something for mom, there's something for dad. <laughs> Gotta get my hanky out. Um, many of you have heard this weekend or might know that my, uh, my dad's dad, my grandfather Clem, passed away a couple months before I was born. Um, and I've been told that I am sort of a spitting image of him. And uh, I've always felt, felt a special closeness to my grandpa Clem, and uh, I think that's in large part due, Dad, to the fatherhood that you received from him. Your humility and your boldness and your deep love for us and for me has taught me to be a father myself. And so traditionally, the newly ordained priest gives the purple stole with which he heard his first confession to his father because he taught me to be just but above all to be merciful dad you've lived a life of deep and abiding love and fatherhood thank you and I love you
The Lord be with you. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever.